14 inch M1 Pro MacBook. Is this 2000 US dollar laptop exceptional for programming or content creation, or is it subpar for the price? In this video, I'll be doing an unboxing and giving you my initial impressions from a software engineering perspective after using this laptop for about a week. Hey there everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Pete and I'm a professional software engineer. And on this channel, we talk about anything related to tech and software engineering. And in this video, we'll be talking about the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook. So here it is, the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook. This is the base model, which comes in at 2000 US dollars. And with the introduction of the M1 Pro MacBook, there were a few different ports that were brought back, like the HDMI port is now an option for the M1 Pro MacBook. And there's also the reintroduction of the MagSafe charger. I really like the MagSafe charger because with my existing MacBook Pro, which uses the USB Type-C charger, whenever I would trip over the charger, that laptop always went flying. Now, although the reintroduction of some of these ports is a great thing, this isn't the reason why I purchased this laptop. I purchased this base model because I wanted to see how it would perform for some of my needs. Working as a software engineer, I need a laptop which can handle the environments as well as the tools that I use concurrently. For example, I might have my front end server and my back end server and my database all running concurrently at the same time, in addition to all the various different tools that I'll be interfacing with. One thing that I've noticed right off the bat is that it's very smooth. Right here, I'm running my Node.js server, which is serving up some of my client side code. And I've also got a backend server, which is running Vertex. And working between both of these applications has proven to be quite responsive. In addition, I have a few other tools which are running as well, which are Visual Studio Code, Postman, and Notion. And while I'm running all these different environments and tools, what I've noticed is all of my programs are still responsive even when I'm trying to work on them simultaneously. Even when I've been excessive in terms of how many different programs I have running, I haven't seen any sort of a decline in terms of performance. And I also haven't seen that infinite spinner that's been quite prevalent in my 2017 MacBook Pro. Take a look at this pre-rendered video, which I have in Final Cut Pro. When scrubbing through the timeline, you can notice it's very fluid and responsive. And going between all these different clips, you can notice that there's no latency, which is something that was very prevalent in my 2017 MacBook Pro, where whenever I would scrub through the timeline, it'd be a little bit choppy. I wanna do some benchmarking in terms of performance for both programming and content creation. We'll start off with the programming side, and there's a tool called AutoCannon, which is an HTTP benchmarking tool. And with this tool, we can test a machine and see how many requests it can make within a given time frame. We're going to be running two types of simulations. So the first simulation, we're going to see how many requests my 2017 MacBook Pro with the Core i7 processor can make compared to my M1 Pro MacBook. Now we're going to set the default currently to 10 seconds. So we'll see how many requests both of these laptops can make within 10 seconds. So the M1 MacBook Pro was able to perform 926,000 requests in 10 seconds. These two tables you see also depict the latency and request volume. So for the various percentiles, you can see how they performed in terms of latency and request volume. Let's move over to the 2017 MacBook and see how that performs. Now, the Core i7 2017 MacBook Pro was able to perform 258,000 requests in 10 seconds. That's a pretty substantial difference, and I didn't expect the M1 MacBook Pro to essentially be almost three times as fast as the 2017 model for this simulation. So for the second simulation, what we're going to do is we're now going to bump up the requests to 1 million requests, and we're going to see how long it takes for the 2017 MacBook to complete 1 million requests compared to the M1 Pro MacBook. 
So after running the test, the M1 MacBook Pro was able to make 1 million requests in 12.01 seconds. And the 2017 MacBook Pro was able to perform 1 million requests in 39 seconds. That is a substantial difference again. And I'm curious to see what kind of results I will get if I were to get an average of all of these requests, because there does seem that there could be discrepancies when you're running one-off scenarios. So that is one thing to keep in mind. The final simulation, I wanna test how long it takes to export a video in Final Cut Pro. Now this video was recorded in 4K, 24 frames per second with Dolby Vision. And we're gonna see how long it takes to export this video for both the M1 Pro and the 2017 MacBook Pro. So for the M1 MacBook Pro, it took 12.7 seconds. And for the 2017 MacBook Pro, it took one minute and 37 seconds. So the million dollar question, is the M1 Pro MacBook worth 2000 US dollars? And for all the use cases that I've tested it against in terms of programming and content creation, I would say yes. It's more than capable of doing all these tasks extremely efficiently, and for a price tag of 2000 US dollars, you would expect it to. My overall impressions of this laptop is that I really like it. I really like how versatile the 14-inch MacBook Pro is. It's the perfect balance in terms of portability as well as screen size. In addition, with the reintroduction of the ports like the HDMI port, the SD card reader, and the MagSafe charger, these are all pluses from my perspective as well, and I've had the opportunity to use all of them. And not having to carry around all these other peripherals to use these ports have also been very handy. Now in terms of performance, the laptop has been great. I'm not worried that the laptop is going to impact my workflow in terms of programming or content creation. Oh, and did I mention there's now a 120Hz refresh rate and the display is now a liquid retina display, so it's very aesthetically pleasing to view. Overall, I'm really impressed with this laptop and I'm really excited to do all of my future projects in terms of programming and content creation on this machine. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did like the video, please consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. I'll be creating another video where I show how I set up my laptop for software engineering. So if that's something that you are interested in, be sure to subscribe. And thanks for watching. Until next time, I will see you later. Bye.